Hello, Pinhaunda, good afternoon. My name is the lay preacher James Davis, and it is a Sunday, so another Sunday, another sermon. Last week, I did a sermon on reincarnation. And for all of those who saw that video, you now must un- understand that reincarnation is a, l- a lie. And it never surprises me as well how many people, even Christians, get confused between the difference of reincarnation and resurrection. They are not the same. Even though they sound the same, after all, they do begin with the letter R. They are not the same. I'm not going to go through it again. Just watch the video again and you'll understand what the difference is. In this video, as I said last week, what I will be talking on next week, which was last week, if that makes sense, I will be talking about karma. I will be talking about the religious beliefs of karma. Now, Many people mm, misunderstand what karma actually is. People tend to think that karma is when someone gets their commitments. People tend to think that karma is when a person finally gets their revenge. Um, But that isn't true either. And many Christians use the word karma... But if they actually knew the true sense of what karma actually is, no born-again Christian would ever use that word ever again. So, what is karma? What is the religious belief of karma? Well, for, for starters, karma c- c- comes from the Eastern religions of Hinduism and Buddhism. And karma, if you actually study karma very carefully, you will come to understand that karma is actually very cruel. And let me explain. Take Hinduism, for example, right? Now, Hinduism originated from India about 3,000 years ago. And it's cruel in that... India is now one of the richest countries in the world, right? If you did not know this, India is one of the richest country is one of the richest countries in the world. Yet its people are one of the most poorest people in the world. Which is I which is ironic but also but also wrong because it's in a rich country especially that it's in a rich country so why are the people poor right there are people there are poor people who need food who need clothing who need medical attention right you got millions of people living in in filth they are living in slums you get people there who, who are starving. They can't afford to buy food. Yet, the, the rich, their government, could easily feed them. There are poor people out there who are naked, who need clothing. They can't afford to buy clothes. Yet, the people, the government, could easily help them to buy clothes, right? The people could easily help them to clothe them. People there are sick. They've got many diseases. And in the 21st century, we have so much medicine to cure diseases that could not be cured before. But yet, they are not being helped. Their people could easily give them a medical attention. The government, that they are... Government could easily give them medical attention. But they don't. And why don't they? Because of their 
belief in reincarnation, right? Which is also called samsara. I explained what that was in in last week's video, so I'm not going to explain it again. I'm just going to focus on karma, right? They believe that if you're sick, if you're starving, if you're without clothes, basically, if you're sick and poor, they won't help you because of your karma. Meaning... That in a previous life, you must have been a very bad people. All poor people must have been really evil, wicked people in a past life. So now, in this life, you are paying for the sins, even though there is no sin in Hinduism. But as a Christian, that's the only word I can find to you, to you use, right? Let me... um. Carry on, right? Because they believe that they were such bad people in a past life. In this life, they don't deserve to be helped. Because they are paying the punishment of what they did in the previous life. And if they suffer, if they are in agony, if they are in such suffering in this life... Then when they finally die and get physically reborn again, then their uh, karma will, will be paid off. And then in the next life, they, they will or should live a better, peaceful, more prosperous life. That's karma for, for you. That is karma for you. This is something completely different from what Christ taught. Christ couldn't stand suffering. Jesus Christ fed the poor. He fed the hungry. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He walked on water. He calmed the storm. He healed people of their leprosy. He healed the lame. He could not stand by to watch people suffering. And there is a passage in God's Holy Word where it sums up Christians and then sums up Hindus. In this sermon, I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version because the passage I'm going to read is um, more difficult than the original King James. James, okay? So, if you have your Bibles uh, with you, please turn w with me to the book of um, Matthew in chapter 25 from verse 31 to verse 46. So we will practically be reading right to the end of this chapter. So that is uh, uh, Matthew chapter 25 from verse 31 to to verse 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels are with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, and the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them for one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Man. And he, sorry, just keep taking tablets, Craig. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for, for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you 
and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in person and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Surely I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you then he will answer them saying surely i say to you in as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these you did not you did not it to me and these will go away into everlasting punishment and the righteous into everlasting life now let's start from uh, Verse thirty-two, and the right, and, and this is a right, and from what I just read, these are the words of Jesus Christ Himself. Okay, so in verse thirty-two, we're just on verse thirty-two, yeah. And the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them from one another, as a shepherd divides a sheep from the goats. And he, and then in verse thirty-three. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. So, the sheep on his right hand, they are his believers. They are the Christians. But the goats on the left, they are the non-believers. They are the pagans. They are the atheists. They are the heathens. Right? Then the king will... So... Uh, and then he says here, right, in verse 35, and here he is speaking to his people, here Christ from verse 35 to verse 41, he's speaking of his people. For when I was hungry, you gave m- me food, right? There are so many Christians out there who are helping the homeless, who are setting up food stalls to feed them, usually with bread and soup, with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, right? You see them everywhere in towns, right? you got stalls with tables and bottles of water, tea and coffee and soup and bread, and the homeless are lining up to be fed, right? For I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. Many, many times I have walked past homeless people and I've given them food and drink. Right? I've helped them out. And yes, I have given them money also, but food and drink I have also given them. Uh, and he gave me drink. Uh, I was a stranger, and he took m- me in. If a stranger comes into your church, if a stranger comes into your congregation, you should welcome the person. Okay, being cautious, I can understand because they're a stranger. But did not Christ die on the on the on the cross for his or or her sins also? Why are you so special? If a stranger comes into your congregation, welcome that person and bless him or her. That's right. There are only two agendas. Thank you. Right. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. Again, 
This reminds me of homeless people. If you see a homeless person on the streets, freezing cold, give them a blanket, give them a coat, help them to wrap up warm, right? Show some love and compassion. Treat those the way that you would want to be treated. Love thy neighbour as thyself. I was sick and you visited me. Christians should visit the sick in hospitals. It is actually one of the Christian rights to actually visit hospitals. M my church does it on a monthly basis. Except we go to a care home. But aren't there also sick people in care homes too? Because they're old. Right? And we go there. And we sing them hymns. And we, and we give them the gospel. It's all about hope. M moving on. I was in prison and you came to me. Now you may be thinking. Prison is for criminals. Right? So, why should any Christian go and visit prisoners? Because it's also biblical. What did Jesus Christ say when he's talking about criminals? It isn't the sick that needs a... Sorry. It, it isn't the well-being that needs a, a doctor. It's the sick. A lot of criminals are in prison because they are sick. They are... They are... I'm mentally ill and they need Christ they need the gospel to heal them of their sickness and didn't Christ also die for, for criminals yes in fact when Jesus Christ was, was hanging on the cross there were two criminals next to him I mean hello moving on and okay that's it so Christ there is speaking about Christians. So, right, so now I'm moving on to verse 41. From verse 41 to verse 43, right? Then he will also say to those on the left hand, the atheists, the pagans, the heathens, depart from me. Uh... Yeah, that's it, yeah. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you curse, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And from verse 42, this sums up Hinduism and their belief in karma, right? And their uh, belief in karma, sorry. This totally sums up what Christ here. This totally sums them up to what Christ says from verse 42 to verse 43. For I was hungry and you gave me no foods. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in, naked and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. As I said at the beginning of this video, healthy Hindus do not feed or help the sick in, in any way because they believe that they deserve it because of their karma, because they were something wicked in a previous life. So in this life, they now deserve to be punished. It is cruel. It is inhuman. And it is wrong. If there's any nation that seriously needs Christianity, and that's India. And praise be to the Lord, Christianity is growing in India. Even though Christians are still a minority in India, it is growing. They are waking up and they are seeing the, the light and they have been freed from the entrapment of Hinduism. 
Hinduism is a cruel religion. N- not only because of its belief in karma, but also because of their beliefs in so many gods and goddesses that they worship. One of the evil, evil goddesses that they worship, wh- which is of course actually a demon, is Kali. Who is Kali? Kali is the goddess of death and destruction. She is um, she is portrayed as a black figure with multiple arms and as a necklace of skulls. If that doesn't represent darkness, if that doesn't represent wickedness, if that doesn't represent depression, evil and despair, then I don't know what does. But praise be to, to God that Jesus Christ came to earth and came on this planet to take all of our sins on that cross. Well, not that cross per se, but on the cross, if you know what I m- m- mean. Okay, before I finish, I uh, I drew this yesterday. What do you think? Without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. Please let me think. Please tell me what you think by leaving your comments in the comment section below. And speaking of comments in the comment section below, please also comment on this sermon. And please also don't hesitate to share this sermon. And to my brothers and sisters in Christ, if I do not get to see you any of you in this lifetime, I shall see you all in our Father's kingdom. Th- thank you all, and God bless you, you, you all. And I shall see you all in our Father's kingdom. Th- thank you, and God bless.